Illumination in the control room dimmed briefly as deep below them, immense pressure was brought to bear on a massive crystal that had been grown only two months earlier. The synthetic gem had been modeled on an actual kyber, which Zerpin had gone to great lengths and cost to acquire. Relatively rare, the so-called living crystals were almost exclusively the property of the Jedi, who seemed to regard the kyber as sacrosanct. Finger-sized ones powered their lightsabers, and larger ones were rumored to adorn the ornate facades of their isolated temples. Results show a piezoelectric effect of 0.3 above previous, Nurbu said. The researchers watched Galen who was shaking his head back and forth. No, Tambo said. We should be seeing a much larger increase. Galen firmed his lips and scowled at no one in particular, wrestling with what might have gone wrong. The unit cell stacking in the synthetic isn't stable enough. We'll have to run a spectrographic autopsy and begin again. The entire batch of bulls might be flawed. It was nothing they hadn't been through countless times, but... Disappointment hung in the cool air regardless. Galen returned to his thinking pose. We could try applying more pressure, Easel suggested in the gentlest way. Perhaps return the crystal to the vapor chamber and introduce a new dopant. Galen glanced around him, dubious and distracted. He had his mouth open to reply when a short chime issued from the control room comm station. Main gate, one of the vaulty said. Lyra rolled her chair over to the comm suite and watched the monitor. A meter of fresh snow had fallen during the night and the air still swirled with flurries. The subsurface heaters that usually kept the principal access road clear had malfunctioned, so snow was piled high in wind-blown drifts from the gate all the way to the facility entrance. Where Lyra expected to see a Takwa hold supply sled waiting, the monitor showed a dilapidated military troop carrier. The word Takwa translated as Snow Strider, although the approximation provided no hint of the quadruped's innate ferocity. The troop carrier hails from the keep, Nurbu said from over her shoulder. Iron Gauntlet Legion, Easel added. The camouflage eddies are distinctive. Uncertainty furrowed Lyra's brow. The sight of the military vehicle filled her with sudden misgiving. What would soldiers want at this hour? Another request to provide power for their base. Nurbu tried to make light of the situation. And here I was hoping for a food delivery. Galen joined them at the comm suite. Whatever the reason, will be our usual courteous and accommodating selves. If we must, Tambo said. Lyra blew out her breath in resignation. I'll see to it. She had just begun to rise when Nurbu nimbly placed himself in her path. You'll do nothing of the sort. You've been spending entirely too much time on your feet. A second vault, he agreed. You haven't been resting enough. Her eyes darted back and forth between them, a tolerant smile tugging at her lips. Keep your lab coats on, boys. I'm only going down to let them in. One of us will go in your place, Nurbu insisted. All of a sudden, I'm more delicate than one of your ice figurines and more precious. Lyra's smile broadened. That's sweet of you to say, Nurbu, but I already have a mother. She's about twenty parsecs from here, and the last thing I'm going to do is let all of you start falling over yourselves to keep me a prisoner. A second chime from the comm suite interrupted her. The main gate attendant's face appeared on the central screen. What do the soldiers want, Rooney? Lyra asked toward the mic. Rooney said something she couldn't make out, so she swung back to Nurbu and the others. Will all of you stop your clucking? It's like a hen house in here. When they fell silent, she turned back to the mic. Say, Say again, again, Rooney. King Chai is dead, the vaulty said. Farah now rules the keep. 
Marshal Farah lacked the military support to overthrow King Chai, Nurbu said, his expression worried. There must be some mistake. Unless she received support from the Separatists, Tambo said. The Separatists? Nurbu tried to make sense of it. Why would Count Dooku want to wade into Vault's internal affairs? No one spoke for a moment. Then Ezel looked from Nurbu and Tambo to Galen. For Galen, Ezel said, the Separatists want his research. Farah must have promised to deliver him into their custody. Nurbu's eyes widened and his whiskers stood on end. It's the only explanation, he told Galen. Count Dooku wants that big brain of yours. Galen made his lips a thin line. Close to Lyra's ear, he said, the war has caught up with us.